proceed. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Using Art in Outreach, put on by the LCMS Office of International Mission. My name is Benjamin Helge. I'm an LCMS missionary serving in the eastern part of the Czech Republic. And today we are learning about how <coughs> art can become a beneficial tool for outreach as the Brücke, the bridge in English, Lutheran Outreach Center in Germany shares their story of responding to the refugee wave. And presenting for you today is Deaconess Kim Biltman, LCMS missionary who serves at the Brücke, along with her colleagues, Magdalena Kutner and Reverend Hugo Geves. So we welcome the three of you here today and thank you for your time. Kim, please go ahead and take it away for us. Hello everyone, it's uh, great to be here with you today. And I wanna introduce you to my two colleagues. When Ben first approached me about doing this webinar, I said, well, I don't know how much I can say about it, but I would love to invite Magdalena and Hugo to share the beginnings and how this all got started and why it developed as it did. Magdalena is herself a very talented artist and she is a graphic designer and she worked with us at Tipurka and was there when the huge wave of refugees came and, and started this group. And um, now because of her experiences, she is actually pursuing a career in art therapy, specializing in working with trauma patients. So unfortunately we no longer have her at Bruka with us, but uh, we are still friends and blessed to know her and, and still see the after effects of the work that she did among us. And we also have Reverend Hugo Gavers with us and he is the pastor missionary from South Africa originally. And he started the Bruka several years ago and um, has been working with both Germans and um, refugees here in Leipzig for, for many years and speaks Farsi very well and has just a huge heart for sharing the gospel and for helping people in need. So I'm gonna turn it over to Magdalena now to, to share the story. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's see if it starts. Okay. Hello, I am Magdalena. So um, as many of you probably know, there was a massive influx of refugees here in Germany a number of years ago. So when the flood of refugees came to Germany to find asylum here, our outreach center was also overflowing with people whose hearts and spirits were and still are very broken people who had experienced terrible things and who were now experiencing the challenges of starting a brand new life in a foreign country and culture with no family, friends or home. Since I was not able to communicate with them due to the language barrier, Pastor Hugo and I discussed ways we could provide opportunities for them that would allow them to heal and relax to express themselves and provide some sort of outlet. When someone is in pain and suffering, it can be especially difficult to find right words, regardless of language. There are just no words to describe some things. And sometimes a person can't even understand themselves. Even in joy, for example, if one wants to praise God, using only spoken words is sometimes not enough. In that case, as we know, we usually use the language of music. Images can make the gospel message more vivid and easier to understand. It's another way to convey the word, another approach to content, the story, especially for non-Christians who harm the entire message is brand new and a quite a lot to take in. And there are still also still quite a few people, migrants and Germans alike, who are unable to read and write. When painting, you become part of the story yourself. That which moves us in the story is allowed to flow through the brushes strokes and we can experience it for ourselves. The story and even God himself become more approachable 
and Jesus becomes more than a character in a Hollywood drama. Images can become the expressions of feelings, trauma, thoughts and dreams and longings of which we often had no idea. They lie hidden, perhaps suppressed by our own social or cultural expectations or norm. So in the first session, I laid out different pictures on the floor and allowed the participant to choose one. The pictures showed different emotions, feelings, colors, people, shapes, flowers, and abstract colors. I wanted to give the participants the chance to pick out what they in that moment needed, something stabilizing or healing or an expression of how they were feeling. In the beginning, I tried to leave things fairly open. It gave me the chance to see what skills they already might have and who had chosen what. I wanted to show the refugees that I see them, take notice of them, and that all their feelings were allowed, whether sorrow or joy. I wanted them to feel welcome, just as they were, with whatever baggage they were carrying. During the long months and even years of waiting in the refugees' shelters for a court date, a verdict, and a future, they were able to have something to keep and them occupied, which brought a bit of hope. They had a bit of structure and a task. Through the trust that was built as a result, a fixed group was formed, which met once a week. I offered a the participant different projects, which would allow them to learn new techniques, for example, dimension, or which would allow them to become familiar with more materials, giving them more options to express themselves. We also covered Christian themes, for example, the Psalms, Bible stories from the lectionary, or themes that Pastor Hugo was covering with them in Bible class. They were free to decide what they wanted to pay. I gave assistance as needed with the amputation or otherwise stayed out the way. At some point, we had so many impressive paintings that we held a small exhibition, which of course had a positive effect on their injured self-esteem. They have experienced a great deal of rejection in their lives. For example, we worked with Psalm 23. And I have a few quotes here from the artists on what they worked on, um, explaining kind of what they put in their paintings. This is from one of the women. Oh man, my mouse is flying a little weird, sorry. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna move it. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening. Anyway, I will just look at the picture and try to remember what she said. <laughs> All right, this painting on the on the right side, the woman that's painted this, she explained that she was um, very thankful for uh, God protecting her daughter. So that's the image on the upper left hand side, and then she explained that this picture on the bottom, this tree was representative, the 12 branches represented the 12 disciples and that one of the branches, which was broken, um, was represented Judas, who then himself was um, the one to betray Jesus. And she said that he realized a little bit too late that it um, was a mistake. And then um, she said, this is her at the bottom praying to God to give her faith and hope and love and peace in her life and to remain with her. And she said that God said, yes, I am always with you. I'm already standing at the door and knocking and that his presence in her life is what gives her peace and hope. And that because of him, she never needs to be afraid. He is her good shepherd and he leads her to still waters and to green pastures. So let's see if I can figure out why this zoomed way in. I'm gonna actually just 
stop it and restart it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, uh, this next one uh, was from another woman, and she talked about God being her future. She said she still struggles with the old person within her, the old and the new, basically, person that she is becoming through God, and that she trusts in Him to lead her into the future and to always be with her um, and that he sees all that she is doing in her life and is helping her to overcome her fears and that he is a way of hope for her in her life. This one, um, the gentleman that drew this talked about how this was a path of hope for him that leads to his future that the trees actually represent himself and that the trees over on the left, the big flourishing trees, that's how he sees himself when he is being supported by God, when God is dwelling in him and giving him nourishment as he leads him to the still waters and the, the green pastures. And that over here is like kind of this dying tree when it's not receiving water or sunlight that that tree will die. And he's, that's how it is when he, he says, if I listen to the voice of Satan and then I'm turning away from God and I'll become like this tree. But when God is with me, leading me as my shepherd, then I become as one of these grown trees that flourishes by the waters. Yeah. And then Magdalena is gonna tell us about the next project based on Revelation. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> so yeah, then we had another exhibition on Revelation 21. Verse 6. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. What exactly is thirst? The thirsty. I have found people in internet forums who were actually looking for words to describe thirst. And one person writes, thirst is worse than homesickness. It fades as a huge furry animal slept in my mouth and left hair everywhere. Thirst is worse than homesickness. So thirst is the feeling of longing. As it says in Psalm 63, O oh God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh veins for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So the existential longing for God's presence. Thirst is something powerful that sizes the whole being and holds it captive. Thirst can drive you mad. In the throat, an invisible hand presses all the fibers together. A desire necessary for life, longing. Without getting water, you waste away. Is there a word for non-thirst? I haven't found one. So the Lord does not only want to come to us, but he wants to give us the spring, a place where fresh, untreated, clean water freely flows forever, living water for free from God. For free means that we don't have to do anything for it, just like children can and should freely pay, play. And because we are all God's children, the same applies to us. Children are allowed to freely paint. And I tell you, adults do so too. And now Hugo will tell us about another project we worked on the um, Isenheimer Altar. So. Thank you. Uh, Maga, yes. Um, this project that we did in the Lent season shows very well uh, what uh, Magdalena and Kim and I were trying to do in this culture, in this time where we were trying to point to Christ, but perhaps didn't have the right words, 
or that people were perhaps not ready to accept yet. Uh, on this picture, Isenheimer Altar by Matthias Grünewald, a very impressive artwork, which was painted during uh, the time of the bubonic plague. And the artist actually took the face of Christ from a dying person, showing this extreme suffering. And as you look at this picture, you will see John the Baptist has an overdimensional finger. So he's pointing directly at, yes, if you follow his finger, it it's directly in line with uh, Christ's hand. And in Christ's hand, there is this nail, which is uh, different to all the other uh, crucifixions. The nail is like something heavy, which is placed on his hand. It is the sin of the world, which is heavy in Christ's hand. He's carrying all our sin. So um, yes, as we were following this picture in the Lent season, we were actually showing different pictures for each week. And in the one uh, uh, season, the one week, um, one of the artists um, really did that which Magdalena explained before, that she herself put herself in this picture. And she saw uh, Maria Magdalena, who herself uh, was plagued by demons uh, in her previous life, and then found Christ. And she saw herself in this role. And in the background of this picture, there's a huge black chasm. She painted a huge black chasm. Um, and hidden in that, which cannot be seen in this picture, was the face of a demon. And um, she said, this picture actually symbolizes her own life, her past. She came from Iran, and there were terrible things that happened also on her journey. And now the future, but the future is threatened. Here's Christ, he is dying. How is the future going to be? I don't know. And um, as you see in this picture of Maria Magdalena that this artist painted, there's a line right across her face. Uh, the artist herself is suffering from a very serious disease, and this disease cuts right through her personality. So she painted this. She saw herself in this picture and said, this is me. I am at the feet of Christ. My hope is in Christ. I'm looking to the future, and I don't know what the future is going to be like. All these emotions were there in this picture, and I found this very, very impressive how uh, uh, the crucifixion, which sometimes for us traditional Christians has become uh, too normal, uh, has become very much alive to somebody who came from outside and was now right inside in this picture. In addition to um, this uh, uh, picture of Maria Magdalena, they also painted uh, the hand of Christ with that nail, uh, exactly that picture. And then uh, all the different artists put all their different hopes in this hand for the future, uh, saying that Christ is the one who is carrying my future. He's holding my future in his hand. So I think this picture illustrates very well the, the mission that uh, Magdalena was trying to do and that you were trying to do, that um, I think also most congregations are experiencing, regardless of in which country they are in. Because we have people that are on the fringes of the church. We have people that are completely from outside, who are perhaps atheists. Now, speaking to such people, we can proclaim the word. Yes, we can do that. But sometimes um, this word is too much of a confrontation to them. And so art as well as music, is a medium in which we can proclaim exactly the same word, but in a different way. And um, I am completely impressed by the way it was done and the way it is still happening, how God is providing these medium to us, where sometimes we think uh, there isn't anything we can say. Yes, there is. We can say something, but maybe through other means. Uh, that God makes available to us. And yes, I would like to take this opportunity also to say a big thank you also to Magdalena for all your work and for also spending this time for us. And also a big thank you to Kim uh, 
for her gift as well, because she uses the gift of music uh, in the same sense as Magdalena is using it, and uh, is very gifted not only in music, but also in language as she's learning Persian and is very gifted in Persian already by now. Um, and at the same instance, thank all of you people from Missouri Synod for uh, uh, giving us such a gifted person here in Leipzig in Germany. <laughs> Yeah, we thank yeah. you all very much for, for that. <laughs> yeah, so this is, I think, our 20 minutes is gone now. And uh, I don't want to go over the time. But yes, uh, we are here to answer all questions that you might have for us. Well, thank you, Deaconess Kim, Magdalena, and Reverend Gevers for sharing with us today. We greatly appreciate it. A reminder to everyone that's here, please continue to write your questions in the Q&A feature here on Zoom. But before we get to those questions, I have just a few announcements for everyone tuning in. I want to draw, to draw your attention to the chat, actually, where you'll see a few links coming in. Uh, one will be for actually learning more about Deaconess Kim Biltman and ways that you can support her and outreach in Germany. It should link you to her Give Now page or to her page on the LCMS website. Um, and you'll also find in the chat uh, a short poll, or it should appear for you to take a short poll. Uh, and we want your feedback. It should pop up on your screen right now. Just let us know uh, quickly uh, how we can continue to improve and make things better. We would greatly appreciate that. Uh, next announcement for you is actually next month, our webinar series continues. So on June 21st at 12 p.m. Central Time, Reverend Dr. Michael and Irene Paul serving in Taiwan will be presenting on using the basics in outreach. And you can find more about this and how to register by following the link in the chat as well. And finally, you can follow us on social media to learn more about uh, LCMS mission work around the world and stay informed about all upcoming events. You can find us on Facebook at LCMS mission work, again on Facebook at LCMS mission work, and on Instagram at LCMS international mission, uh, again LCMS international mission on Instagram. And that's my last announcement for you. Uh, so with that, we can look if there are any questions here. Uh, I just move a few things around on my screen. So I don't see anything in the Q&A yet. So if anyone has a question, go ahead and write it there. Uh, I just wanted to say one thing. Uh, it was inspiring for me, your sharing, or I've learned something as well. Uh, and this idea of how often we don't have the right words to express something and how, how true that is, how true that is. Uh, so thank you for reminding me of that and whether it's through art or music or something else to help people uh, have those words. But I, I have a question here now for you. Uh, it asks, uh, when you had the refugees choosing paintings that connected with their emotions, did you print them off the internet or where did you find them? So a very practical question for you all. I, maybe Magdalena, you can answer that, or I guess anyone, but yeah, where did you find them? Where did you get them? Ah. Yeah, I, I, I found them in the internet. I um, just searched for, I don't know, some different kinds of feelings, like or emotions and sad, happy, <laughs> uh, thankful, whatever, everything. You need everything. <laughs> yeah. I hope that's fine. Yeah. And I just printed it and yeah. Uh, you yeah, we we showed some examples. I don't know if you get it there. So yeah. That was like during the beginning part. There were kind of the samples of what she used. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's another question uh, from Carol. It asks, how long have you had this beautiful program and how many people have participated in it? And then how do you continue to stay in touch with visitors? So I guess multiple parts to that question. Um, 
I, Kim or uh, Hugo, want you? <laughs> yeah, why don't you, Hugo? Because I wasn't here when it started, so I don't know for sure when. Okay. Um, yes, the, we had in the beginning, we had uh, five people. That was uh, intentionally a small number because we had uh, in Brook at that time, we had about 70 people in about uh, 50 square meters of uh, our office. <laughs> they were all coming in and we had no time for small talk. And so we deliberately had a very, very small group in the art group because only with a small group you can work properly. Mm -hmm. And it's the contact, the continued contact with such a small group is, is um, self speaking, so to say, because you can, you have, you share things, you know where they live. You, uh, they, uh, I remember one of the ladies also um, approached Magdalena with a very personal problem. And then she was involved with um, bureaucracy and with helping her in, in another problem, which had nothing to do with art, but it started with art. And uh, Magdalena, maybe you want to explain that story about uh, how the one person then uh, came and she came with a completely open attitude and left with a different attitude. <laughs> Remember? Uh, you, you mean? Um, At home. Uh, yeah. So yeah, when she came in the first time, she said, here yeah, I am, but I'm an atheist and I'm, I'm not interested to, to be a Christian and uh, I'm just here to paint and to draw. And yeah, and this was uh, the last picture we saw. Now she's a Christian, and this is <laughs> um, a story we, we didn't expect it, of, of course. For me or for us, the, the first intention was to help the people or just be there in the first moment. And then we had this wonderful group for a few years. And I'm not, I don't remember when we started <laughs> to go, I'm not sure. 2016 maybe or something like this 17 and yeah in the beginning it was a small group some refugees just came and had a look and some of them try and just or just be there and then it was okay and it was no no pressure <laughs> you want I, I don't I didn't want it to give them pressure to do something just yeah and then because of the pandemic uh, corona we had to close for this time uh, but now we're hoping that uh, in summer we can start again so uh, i think we will start with the group again in summer so soon next excellent. month <laughs> <laughs> excellent um, okay i got a few more you answered one of the questions right there but would you this is another practical question would you recommend letting children and adults into the same class or would you separate them or do you have any comments on this um hmm. um it expect it's, it's difficult um um maybe yes i mean we all live together so why not but maybe when when you want to to work on or when you have the feeling there's a very big problem for one person or with deep emotions and very hard to take it maybe this is not a topic you want to share with the children i mean we maybe have to i don't know take care of them not to there's a lot of let's say energy i'm i'm not good in English so <laughs> I tried to find the right word so there's a lot of energy when we we draw um, and it can be a lot of negative energy or it's okay but um, maybe it's it's yeah it depends on what kind of topic or you're working on so but when when you just want to work on a bible story yeah maybe it's okay Pentecost, maybe it's <laughs> you can work with the family. Or, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's just, excellent. just try, try and error. I think this is just do it. We we also just did it, so we we had no idea what we are doing. I mean, <laughs> so we just trust God, and yeah, here we are now. So, and we do have separate programs for children at Brooka. So, okay, great. 
Thank you. I got two more questions. One, another practical one. Do you have any advice for some of the best materials or mediums to begin with when starting to use, like to have a group or just using a tabletop surface, anything for a, a 101 kind of beginner that would be starting something? Yeah, um, I think the good thing is um, you need a different kinds of materials. So I had a table and I put on everything what we had, <laughs> um, watercolors and acryl, what, what, Kim, <laughs> maybe you can help me with oh, yeah. the- Oh, acrylics, okay. acrylics. Acrylic, yeah, um, pastel kreide. Um, it's like- Pastel, yeah. Pas yeah. Pastels. <laughs> and um, everything, and uh, buntstifte. Crayons. Uh, pants, <laughs> okay, it's easy. <laughs> and um, yeah. So just put there everything you have. And um, maybe, maybe you have to motivate them to, to use something what they never used before. Um, so I made this experience that um, they, the most of them never, never had um, a contact with acrylic or, or with a color pen. They just use the pen to, to write a document so with colors for example so <laughs> it was uh, i never never thought it would happen like this but yeah so this was the bridge to the colors <laughs> i built for him so yeah thank you and then i got one more question we're kind of we're going to wrap up here but magdalena how someone asked how will you continue your studies after your studies how will you continue or can you share with us your plans for that? <laughs> oh, so I have two year, more years with my studying. So um, I have a lot of plans and visions, let's say, um, but I want to keep it open. Um, so I, I would like to stay in touch still with, with Die Brücke. Um, but yeah, let's see. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to find my the way God gave me to the way to to help people to the suffering they have in life. So let's see. I don't know. It's in his hands, right? Yes, <laughs> it's in his hands. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all so much for sharing with us today. Uh, thank you for everyone that participated as well. Uh, again, you will be able to find uh, our webinar online. Uh, later on and with that we pray that God continues to lead outreach through art uh, forward at De Brücke and that it continues to give people the means to express themselves but also as uh, Reverend as you pointed us back to the gospel we pray that it also points all those that attend back to Jesus Christ uh, that's what it's all about so thank you so much thank uh, you for the opportunity as well. <laughs> yes. Uh, and with that, have a wonderful day, everyone. And we hope to see you soon at our next webinar. <laughs> <laughs>